All right, what is up guys? Bonus video this week and jumping right to it. Today's video will be about 20 more tips and tricks for Stardew Valley 1.4. I realized the other day that a lot of my tips and tricks are aimed towards later game and intermediate level playstyles. To switch it up, we're going to be talking about 20 more tips and tricks that are aimed towards beginning game in Stardew Valley and things I wish I knew about 700 or so play hours ago. Some of these tips you may know, but hopefully there are some that you don't. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and welcome. If you're coming back, glad to have you. So let's get into it. Tip number one, manage your time. It may seem obvious since we only have limited time in each day and each day is considerably shorter than real life. Organize what you need to do each day before you even head out the door in the morning. Whether it is mining or farming or fishing, make sure you have all the time you need. Tip number two, organize your farm. No matter what style of playing you have, keep things in order. Obviously, each individual person can configure their farm to their liking, but it's always good practice to organize your crafting items and otherwise accordingly. This also helps out with tip number one substantially. Tip number three, relationship items. If you're going for villager of the month, make sure you keep a lot of items the villagers like. With the new 1.4 update, you now have access to a section of your start menu that keeps track of which items the villagers like and which ones they wish they could toss in the trash. So keep a chest around for the villagers favorites. Tip number four, build sheds. Sheds can save a lot of room on the old farm. With a completely upgraded shed, you'll have so much more room for activities. So Robin, get to Chobin. Ch Chobin? Yeah, yeah, I guess that'll work. Tip number five, keep forageables. Keeping your forageables early game for some extra energy or health is not a bad thing at all. Most of the time, you'll need it. Make sure to forage everywhere as well and get familiar with the foraging spots around the map. Never forget the beach either. Tip number six, clearing debris. I know, I know, it's a pain in the rear to have to constantly upkeep the farm until you get that godly gold clock. The reason being though is that debris spawning on your farm can destroy a crafting machine or the like. It won't destroy your buildings or trees, but any crafting items left out to fend for themselves against the weeds can be lost to the Stardew Valley universe or something to that effect. T to be honest, I don't, I don't know where these things go. Where, where do they go? Tip number seven, always keep some gold on yourself. Always having some gold in your pocket is a good way to go. I can't tell you how many times my slippery brain has dropped the ball on a Calico Desert ticket or some much needed extra ore or materials. Keep some handy for those make or break situations. Tip number eight, Bob and Weave. No, that's not the name of a new hit kids TV show. I really mean it, Bob and Weave. All jokes aside, nothing wrong with avoiding monsters the best you can in the mines. Drink a little coffee, eat a little spicy eel, and zip around them like you know what's good for you while using your pickaxe and or bombs to blast or hack away at rocks. Tip number nine, use the workbenches. A simple item bought from Robin as soon as you have access, the workbenches are an incredible addition to any farm. They allow you to access what you have in a chest at the same time allows use of the crafting menu. What this means, you no longer have to have a packed inventory when crafting. It is absolutely a lifesaver. Tip number 10, use your kitchen. From time to time, you are gifted or acquire cooking recipes like from the Queen of Sauce. Some of these recipes are amazing for energy and health. Don't be afraid to get your butt in there and get to cooking. Tip number 11, use scarecrows. I'm guilty of this one as well, especially when I'm min-maxing or doing high profit, high aesthetic style farms. Nonetheless, make sure you set them up as best you can. The regular scarecrows cover eight squares out on either side in a circle. Well, as best as a circle can be in a pixelated style game. So make sure you plan that accordingly as well. 
tip number 12 don't forget the spa the spa comes accessible on day three of summer after an earthquake once it is you can use it to quickly and fully restore your health by standing in the pool easy peasy for a quick boost midday when you're zapped of energy and low on food items Tip number 13, even though Joja stinks. If you need to, use the Joja Mart development form to access community center bundles. As much as we don't like Joja and what they represent, it can come in handy at times. While you're there, make sure to get a warm, syrupy Joja Cola. Tip number 14, don't make a fuss talk to Gus. <laughs> Gus at the Stardrop Saloon is a lifesaver when it comes to some extra food items in a pinch. He also carries coffee and a boatload of other recipes for your own use. Good old Gus. Tip number 15, pop those geodes. You only need 60 items donated to Gunther in the museum to access the sewers with a rusty key gift from him once completed. The bonus is, if you've already donated an item to the museum, a lot of them can be worth quite a bit, such as fire opal or a star shard. So make sure that you sell any duplicates. Cha-ching! Tip number 16, decorate with ease. I forget from time to time, but there exists two catalogs within Stardew Valley to access every given house accessory imaginable, give or take a few special or secret items. Decorating is fun, and having the catalogs, one person's from Pierre and one from Robin, makes it all that much easier. Tip number 17, don't want to marry? Find yourself enjoying the single life, but want a companion other than your trusty cat or dog? Have no fear, Krobus is near. <laughs> With some simple gifts and plenty of love, the confused little Krobus can be your trusted roommate. Krobus may also gift you a sea urchin, strange bun, void egg, void mayonnaise, or void salmon. Such a good roommate. <laughs> Tip number 18, use the dressers. The new oak dressers and the like now give you access to some storage space, but only for clothes, rings, pants, boots, and shirts. Still gives you an option to store the less usable items rather than have to ditch them somewhere in a long forgotten chest on Marnie's ranch. Uh oh, that, uh, that reminds me of something. Tip number 19, birthday gifts are the best gifts. But there is a catch. If you give a villager a gift that is a hated item on their birthday, it is a dramatic decrease in the relationship points. So be careful. On the inverse, the loved birthday gifts give an extra 640 points to that villager's relationship status with you. So start checking your calendar. Tip number 20. Before we get into tip number 20, I just want to say thank you all so much for the 700 subscribers we hit today. 700 Jedi and counting. You guys rock and I'll continue to bring you the high Jedi Stardew Valley content you all deserve. Okay, so on to the last tip. Putting crafting equipment almost anywhere. Whether it's in Calico Desert, the mines, the bus stop, or the railroad area, you can place these machines almost anywhere. And not to be forgotten, the quarry. You can fit loads of machines in that area and quickly ac access it via the minecart. Stack it full of crystal nariums, and you'll be richer than Richie Rich before you can spell the word rich. <laughs> So anyways guys, that's it for today's video. Still another video will be out this week, so subscribe and stay notified. Next up is our fall finale for the Min Max Guide, so make sure to stay tuned. Oh, and don't forget to stay lit, stay up, and stay high, Jedi. Peace.